Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, as you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America. In offices and factories, on farms and ranches, in mines and oil fields, folks find that chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama me. <laughs> American language is a very funny sometimes. If you ask a big, strong man how he's a feel, he's a say, I can't the kick. <laughs> then if you ask a sick man how he's a feel, he's a say, I'm so sick, I'm a run down. <laughs> it's a hard to figure out the mamma me. A healthy man he says he can't kick, and a sick man he says he's a feeling like a runner. <laughs> I'm not feeling so good myself lately. But nothing is a hurt to me, so, so don't worry. Is it just that I'm, I'm not feeling right? Eight o'clock in the morning, I'm a feel like to sleep. Ten at the night, I'm a feel like to get up. Twelve o'clock in the afternoon, I'm gonna feel like a lay down. I'm gonna know what to do. Go to the doctor or get a new clock. <laughs> so far, Mamma Mia, this went on. I had a one cold after the other. And my medicine chest is doing a business with me 24 hours a day. Mamma Mia, for my medicine chest, was I had a lunch counter, that would be a drugstore. But tonight, when I'm going to go to my night school class, I'm going to ask my friends what they think I'm sure to do. Don't, don't worry about the weather. Everything is going And now, on. class, let's turn to the grammar portion of the lesson you were assigned. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us what is an active verb. An active verb? Yes. Give us an example of a sentence with an active verb. Mm. Let me see. Oh, that's very good. Huh? <laughs> I said something right? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, now you may give us a sentence with an active verb. I see Betty. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, is she active? That depends on what Betty is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, if you don't know the answer, just say so. Tabasco? Uh-huh. Give us another example of an active verb. Tell the truth, Miss Bolden, I'm no feel so active myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, where is the active verb in that sentence? I'm no know. Maybe it's in a medicine chest. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I believe you actually don't feel very well. He don't, Miss Spalding. I was talking with Luigi before school. He just don't feel right. And my advice to him was he should close up his antique shop and lay in bed for a week. Yeah, but uh, how am I going to run a business if I'm in a bed? Who's going to stand by the cash register? Luigi, with the business you got, you could take the cash register to bed with you and nobody would know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that is very good practical advice. Sure, that's practical. You want to should kill himself with work if he don't feel well? I agree with Schultz. No, sometimes exercise is better than bed rest. No, we are talking about this antique shop. <laughs> Luigi, stop worrying about business. You know what they say, a dead millionaire ain't worth five cents. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now with inflation, he ain't worth ten cents. <laughs> Ach, smile, Luigi, you ain't dead yet. You only look bad. <laughs> Luigi, I have an old family remedy that might help you. You, you, you just boil up about a quart of water, add a half of a bottle of real lemon juice, uh -huh. six tablespoons of sugar, and then a glass of whiskey. Ach, you know, we got the same remedy in our house. 
Only we leave out the water, the juice, and the sugar. <laughs> Well, maybe you should see a doctor. When's the last time you visited your doctor? Thirteen years ago. <laughs> Kimmel, if the doctors depended on Luigi for business, they would have to test cigarettes 24 hours a day to make a living. <laughs> well, certainly you should get an up-to-date physical checkup. In fact, I don't like your being out of doors too much. Oh, you don't? No, I think you should go home now and somebody should go along with you. Uh, Miss Spalding, uh, it would break my heart to leave the class two hours earlier, but uh, I am willing to make the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I think Mr. Olson would lose least of the lesson if he went. Would you please, Mr. Olson? Oh, oh I would be very happy to. Oh, would I be happy to accompany Olson sometime? <laughs> I shall take good care of you. I want to thank you, Olsen, and a, and a goodbye, for class. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to feel better tomorrow. And goodbye, Miss Spalding. Goodbye, Mr. Basco. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, Luigi. Take care. Himmel, what kind of farewell is this? <laughs> He's only playing a little hooky with the teacher's permission. Now, you'll feel better, Luigi, so smile, huh? Be like me, always happy, always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Luigi, uh, I never like to impose my judgment on anyone, but uh, in my opinion... You are not getting enough exercise. Exercise? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I suggest that you go to a gymnasium and work out. Here, here. Uh, just feel of my biceps. All right. Uh, where do you keep them? <laughs> my arms. Uh, uh, go, go ahead, feel. Hmm. That's a hard like a rock. Yeah. Oh. Let me see how I'm a feeling. Oh, just uh, like a spongy cake. <laughs> Yo, ho, that is your state. You should go to my gym and, and start weightlifting. Weightlifting? That's uh, going to make me feel good. Oh, oh, oh nothing better. Yeah, for just a few dollars, you can be built up to lift weights as high as 250 pounds. Well, but why am I going to do this, Olsen? I'm uh, going to go home and lift the rose. That's uh, cost me nothing. <laughs> Luigi, you are joking. And you shouldn't, as your health is concerned. No, no, be before you do anything tomorrow, go down to this place and you say to the man... Come here, Sarah. Come here, Sarah. Come here, Oh, sorry, friend, just punching the bag a little. What can I do for you? Well, I'm... I'm, I'm a Luigi Bosco, and my friend Olsen, he's a set me oh, down. Oh, the... yeah, I remember Olsen when he first came in here. He was a puny, skinny runt, just like you. Hi, right, thank you. <laughs> Olsen, he's a good friend of mine. In no time at all, I put two inches on his chest, two inches on his arms, one inch on his calf, and took five inches off his stomach. Oh, was it the same Olsen? Only you divide them up a different, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I'll have you in tip-top shape in no time, too. I can tell by looking at you what's wrong immediately. Sluggish circulation. Did you know that? I'm a note. I can't even say it. <laughs> and you know what's causing it? Your blood, man. It's crying out for oxygen. You can hear it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to. I can see it. All right, come on, let's step into the locker room. All right. Are you, you, you sure it's going to be all right? Don't worry, just want you to try a few things. I see guys like you all the time. Uh, here, uh, get into these shorts. All right. Mamma mia, the shorts, all right. You know what's the cause of your weakness? No, what? The... Civilization. Huh? That's a better disease? It's a poison. The average guy today always complains he's tired. That's uh, my complaint. Uh. And yet all he does is sit. You can tell, huh? Sure, I can tell. Everybody's the same way. The minute he gets up, he begins sitting. 
sitting at the breakfast table, sitting in the auto, the subway, the trolley yeah, car. Yeah, Donna, don't forget the bus. I'm always the user of the bus. Yeah, <laughs> rather than the bus. <laughs> sitting in the office, sitting in the movie, sitting at lunch, sitting at dinner. You know what you get from sitting? Shiny pants. <laughs> Lassitude. Lassitude? That's another disease? Flabby muscles, weak. Ah, that's a me. All right. Up. Now to make a new man out of you. Please, please, not too much. Just, uh, just to change the older man a little bit. <laughs> All right. Grab this 90-pound dumbbell. And a place no call names. I'm going to like it that <laughs> Relax, will you please? This hunk of iron is called a dumbbell. Oh, my sorry. Now, lift it up. I lift it up. That's right. Lift it up. With the what? With your hands. Please. Uh, maybe you got a little uh, five pound of stupid. <laughs> That's a dumbbell, stupid. Please, no names. Okay, okay. Now, you got to lift that dumbbell. Uh -huh. It's all in the mind. Yeah. Keep saying this. We're as strong as we think. We're as strong as we're we as think. We're as strong as we think. We're as strong as we think. Or we're as strong Good. as we Good. think. Now, we're as strong. lift it up. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Now, wait, wait. Down. Wait, wait, please. As long as we're as strong together, maybe you lift and I'm going to say, up or down. <laughs> Try it again. Now, lift that 90 pounds and think. What's the matter? All I'm going to think is a five pounds. <laughs> I'm about to stop. I'm getting to get in the wick. Nonsense. Now, do as I say. All right. All right, now. Bend down. Straighten up. Bend down. I'm down. Straighten up. up I'm coming. Hands up. Wrists up. up. Come on. Now, I'll count. All right. One, two, three. I'm going to sit down. Look, no sitting down. Everybody move. All right. In place. Double time. Come on. Double time. Shoulders back. Breathe deep. Take a big deep breath. I can't breathe. Move those legs. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Make right, believe you're on a 10 mile force march. Up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 I'm a thinking of mamma me, I'm man of the army. <laughs> Turn to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that will make your daily work more pleasant and enjoyable. Keep a package of delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum in your purse or pocket, and from time to time, chew a stick. You see, chewing on a smooth, good piece of gum gives you a feeling of comfort and satisfaction. It helps relieve pent-up tension, and as a result, you just naturally feel better and work better. Then, too, Wrigley Spearmint gum has a lively, refreshing flavor that cools your mouth and freshens your taste. So chew Wrigley Spearmint while you work. You'll really enjoy it. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, instead of going to the doctor, I'm going to listen to Olsen. And I'm going to went to the gymnasium. All the night I was walking and walking like in the army. And when I went to the bed and I got up in the morning, I felt like the army was walking into me. <laughs> but at least there was one little help. I didn't think so much about my sore throat and my colds. My bones was hurt so much I could only think about them. <laughs> but anyway, like the gymnasium manager told me, I'm try to think that I'm strong. I'm a thought and a thought all day. And then before I went to bed at the night, I'm a thought I'm a better see a doctor. So I'm a look in the telephone book, and when the door is open up, it's just then, and in there comes my friend, a squally. Hello, Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. 
Hello, little banana nose. <laughs> what are you looking at a telephone book for? I'm looking for a doctor. Doctor, what's wrong with you, little cabbage push? Well, uh, <laughs> but well, is, is there nothing exactly? I'm, I'm just a feel weak all over. I've got no strength and I'm sleepy all the time. Luigi, you don't need no doctors and no doubts about it. You got all the signs of a jungle of fever. <laughs> the jungle? That's no possible, Pasquale. I've never been in a jungle. You ever been in the zoo? Well, sure. There you are. <laughs> Tsitsi flies is a hangout there all the time. <laughs> hey, let me see your tongue. Come on, stick it out. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, Luigi. Your tongue looks as long as always. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, I think there's a hope for you. You do? Yes. And I'm going to give you a prescription that's going to guarantee you live as long as a married man do. 72 years. <clears throat> Yeah, but Pasquale, I'm not the manager. That's the prescription of my daughter Rosa. Uh, <laughs> what do you say, my son? <laughs> <laughs> Get another patient, Papa. <laughs> Look, Luigi, I'm only trying to help you. You think I like to see you walking around like this, weak, broken down, a mimic? The way you feel right now, if you was to catch any little sickness, it would be a catastrophe. Yeah, well, that's why I'm likely to see a good doctor. A good doctor. Where are you going to get the money to afford the one? You think I'm going to... Luigi, pay... my fellow boob. Oh, hello, Pasquale. <laughs> hello, Schultz. Hello, Schultz. Well, Luigi, tell me, how did you make it out with the doctor? Schultz, hmm? I'm, I'm a dinner go to the doctor. Also, he sent me to the gymnasium where he's ago. Huh? Then the gymnasium, a man is told me to go on a diet. Raw carrots, turnip juices, soya beans with olive oil. That's the diet? Is it no good, huh? Oh, no, no, that's wonderful. You could live for a hundred years on that diet. If you happen to be a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, you little dumb cop. Always you are listening to everybody. Now, will you take Miss Spalding's advice and go see a doctor immediately, if not sooner? Yeah, but uh, that's what I was doing, Schultz, when a Pasquale was you coming. Yes, and I was uh, stopping him. What? Luigi, ain't you tired of your friends of stupid advice? Doctors, a gymnasium, exercise, a broken back. You listen to everybody but me and what's happening. You're getting sicker. Why are you always running around like a crazy little plumber looking for a leak in the faucet when all the time you could have come straight to the drift? <laughs> Maybe you're right, to Pasquale. Nobody's a bigger dripper than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's come out a different. <laughs> Pasquale, will you stop bothering Luigi and let him go to the doctor? He don't need no doctor. He needs my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> hey, but that ain't a doctor. That's the whole hospital. <laughs> I'm as sick of these wise crackers. The go, Luigi. Go to the doctor. Only when he sues you for no paying his bills, it don't come to me. I sure, sir. Pasquale, he's a say that the doctors will charge you a lot of money. Ach, that's no problem. You go to the clinic. The clinic? The sure, over there, everything is free. Nurses, doctors, medicine. That America gives you. Come on, I'm going to show you where that is. All right, sir. Pasquale, this I'm no kind of refuser. Come on, Schultz. All right, so Luigi, go. But if you find out you're sick, don't blame me. You could have stayed with me and never known you were sick until you died. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Nelson. I was just examining with my feet. And somebody else is giving me a yellow card, which I'm exchanging for this red card. Where am I going now? Well, let's see. You've had your orthopedic examination, respiratory, pulmonary. Take it over to Ward 4 for general physical. General physical? Ward 4? Oh, thank you very much. Mamma mia, there's so many people. It's enough to make somebody scared. Yes? Oh, ex excuse me, you were the for it? Well, uh, yes. I'm looking for a man in an army uniform. 
man in army uniform. Who are you looking for? General of physical. <laughs> Physical is the final examination. Let me have your card and chart. Thank you. Mr. Luigi Basco. How do you do, Mr. Basco? I'm Dr. Adler. How do you do, Doctor? Fine. And how are you? Not so good. That's the way I'm here. <laughs> good enough. Sit down, Mr. Basco. Uh, what's wrong with you? Well, uh, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm just a feel weak, Doctor. I'm tired all the time. Mm -hmm. Sore throat. Mm-hmm. Do you smoke, drink, or keep late hours? Oh, no, and I'm a don't to play cards, you need it. Oh. <laughs> Would you remove your shirt, please? Why, you don't like it, this is shirt? <laughs> I just want to listen to your heart. Oh, oh well, all right, I'm going to take them off. <laughs> Fine. Now, now, hold still. Take a deep breath while I apply the stethoscope. All right, then. <laughs> hey, hey, it's a tickle. <laughs> come on now, come. Take a deep breath. Mm hmm. I'll make a note of that. What do you write to Donna, Doctor? Uh, now the blood pressure, Mr. Basco. Your arm, please. All right, to here. Aha. Uh -huh. Doctor, please. What's this? Aha, uh, uh -huh. is it good or bad? I'll make a note of that. <laughs> now for the teeth. Uh, when's the last time you checked your teeth, Mr. Basco? What am I going to look at the check? I know it's a 32 all the time. <laughs> Open the mouth, please. Wider. Wider. Ho, ho. Ho, ho, what's this? <laughs> I'll just make a note of that. Now the throat. A little wider. A little wider. You want to make sure to have a wider throat? No, no. <laughs> Just open your mouth way open. That's it. That's it. Mr. Basco, do you have trouble breathing at night? You joking? <laughs> Mr. Basco, do you have trouble breathing at night? I don't know. I'm asleep. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the nostrils. Right. Head back, please. Right. The left nostril first. Mm -hmm. Now the right one. Ho, ho. Doctor... Yes? Please, I'm a kind of stand this. So which is the better? The mm, the, uh, the ho ho. <laughs> Let me take care of the worrying, Mr. Basco. Now you just put on your shirt, pick up your charts, and follow me into that office. I want to talk with you. I have to shoot it back. I'm a coming right away. <laughs> oh, Dr. Adler, I'd like to talk with you for just a second. It's about that 94-year-old Mr. White. Dr. Jones says his heartbeat is considerably slower. Hmm, let me see his record. Yes. Doctor, here I am, a doctor. Oh, yes, yes, just a minute. Let me see. This chart shows a definite sign of a breakdown, Miss Lacey. Hemoglobin count extremely bad. Respiration rate? Hmm, very bad. What? I wish there was something we could do for him, but I think this is the end. Come on, Mommy. Miss Lacey, have him removed to the lower floor and tell the interns to make his last few hours as easy as possible. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let you. <laughs> Mr. Boxer. No, go by. I'm not going to let you put the men downstairs in the lower floor. I'm going to have to go to years and yet. Go to years and yet. Luigi, look, honey, what's the happen? Yeah. Face all a flush to the perspire, your hair hanging it down, a shirt half out, a tie twisted around your neck. You look bad enough to collect a new life insurance policy right now. How you guess? Guess? You guess what? That I'm only got a few hours to live. What? Who told you that? Well, I was a doctor in the clinic. Oh, so you went to the clinic, and that's what they told you, huh? Yeah. Well, I warn you. Let me see those. Cards. I'd like to hear the hit of Pasquale. Blood negative. Negative? What? Say that a minute, Pasquale. Negative means nothing. <laughs> Mamma mia, I've got to no blood. <laughs> Pulse negative, pressure negative, negative, liver, blood, abdomen negative. But, well, there was my trouble all the time. I was empty in a side. <laughs> I see you right for doing what I told you not to go to the doctor. Luigi's a lucky for you I don't believe in him, so I'm going to get you out of all this, but we got to act the fast. Act the fast? Well, what the, what the As hell? As a bachelor, you ain't got a longer to live, huh? but a married man will live much longer. Oh. That's like I told you, sadistics. Now, <laughs> if you just sit 
say the word that's to make you my son-in-law, I send you to the best of sanitariums in the West to cure you. And if you still die, no burial is going to be too expensive for you. Come on, talk quick. What do you say? What the kind of machine? All right, Papa. I'm going to get married. <laughs> What's going to happen is the day of my life. I'm going to call in the blush of the bride from the kitchen. Rosa! 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 You can't be talking about Yes, you my delicate little baby. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. Rosa, guess the water. I just asked Luigi the question and he told me he's willing to get married. But, Papa, I want to marry him. Oh, shut up, you say. <laughs> now, for you two just to look out. Mr. Basco, I'm so glad I found him. Mama, may I ask the doctor? Keep your hands off of this corpse, you grave digger. <laughs> Mr. Basco, why did you run out of the clinic like that? Well, because you're telling me I'm going to have to get along until the you are going to push me down the other floor. Just as I thought. We weren't discussing your case. I was giving the nurse some orders pertaining to an old gentleman in Ward G. You mean... I'm gonna live it. Yes. You're too late, Doctor. I already saved his life. <laughs> the only thing I did find wrong with you, Mr. Basco, and what may very well be the cause of all your symptoms, are your tonsils. My tonsils? That's right. I'd have them removed immediately if I were you. Oh, you and I'll be then? very glad to recommend our finest surgeon for you. Well, thank you, Doctor. Maybe now I'm gonna feel it finer. Good. You come in tomorrow and we'll arrange for the operation. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. And thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Luigi, take my advice. If you get all that talk, you're going to get the same trouble all over again. No, Pasquale, I'm going to have my tonsils taken out. No wonder I was always having so trust. That's a fine uh, way to talk to me, man who's a save your life. Oh, no, doctor is a save of my life. I don't care who saved it. When are you going to marry Rosa? That's never, Pasquale. Wait for my son. This the time I'm saving my own life. Goodbye, Pop. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, I'm finally found out what's wrong with me. And the next week, I'm going to have operation. I'm sure everything is going to come out to fine, especially my tonsils. <laughs> but please don't worry yourself too much, Mamma Mia. I'm going to write to you next week, straight from the hospital, tell you all about the operation. And you know, Mamma Mia, if Pasquale was only have a daughter as nice as the nurses they got to hear, eh? This letter would be signed to your loving children, Mr. and Mr. Luigi Basco. Instead of your loving son, Luigi Basco, the immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to enjoy between your meals. It isn't rich or heavy, yet it's refreshing and satisfying. As you know, too, chewing helps keep your teeth clean and bright and also aids digestion. So next time you go shopping, get a few packages of healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy it often between your meals and pass it around to other members of your family. They'll enjoy it, too. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter telling about his tonsil operation to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Hans Condry as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lord Glasgow. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>